know just how to get your attention. You men are so weak. All I need to do is put on the right outfit. A mini skirt, high heels and show my thighs or a little cleavage and you'll find yourself lusting after me. I know the Bible says that women are the weaker vessel, but it was a woman that took down the strongest man ever, Samson. Even the wisest man, Solomon, fell before women. <laughs> Men are weaker than women. You can't even control your eyes or the very thoughts that come into your mind. Even now, you are bothered by me. So you men better man up fast because us women are going to always wear whatever we want to, no matter how wicked and sexy it is. Got you. During this past century, it was fashion designers that laid the foundation of this modern fashion industry we know today. The liberation of women from corseted confinement, the creation of ready-to-wear clothing, logos, licensing, window displays, lifestyle brands, fashion shows, and marketing are all a direct result of diabolical minds working together to bring about the seduction of lust and sensuality into the fashion industry. The seduction of women's clothing has been the first and the worst over the years. Women went from wearing clothes that cover them completely to being almost completely nude, wearing only a strip of fabric. When women take off their clothing in public, they call them strippers or harlots. Well, the fashion industry has made a way for women to dress this way without the shame of being called a stripper or a harlot. The world didn't see it coming, but by the time the religious world realized it, it was already penetrating the church and the gospel industry as well. What is the history behind the women's fashion industry? What is the origin of some of the styles of fashion we see today? If you look closely, you will see that there is something more sinister going on. You will understand why women's clothing has become a part of the devil's fashion industry. As a minister of the Most High, it amazes me the ignorance that I have seen among religious people that claim to follow the Bible. I have to ask myself, is this done on purpose? Because in the late 60s and early 70s, most women in the church assemblies covered themselves up. But now in today's time, women are wearing whatsoever they want to. And no one is saying anything about it. Women are wearing Spanx as pants with a very skimpy top. Since when has it become the norm to wear mini skirts in the church? Some of you women ought to be ashamed with the stuff that you wear. But there's no shame because your conscience have been seared with a hot iron. Ain't no shame in this game you're playing. But there are consequences to it though. Why do women today think that they can dress like low-hanging fruit but still be considered a prize? If you think that showing your body determines your worth, then you're already deceived. Most men will treat a horse woman like a horse woman and a queen like a queen. End of story. Have you ever heard the phrase, the devil's in the details? Things are rarely exactly as they seem in this world. It's only when you look closely and compare the details that you will begin to see what a thing is made of, whether of good intent or bad. If you look at the details of modern clothing with discernment, you can see the hidden agenda. The devil has many devices that are designed to distract and entertain the mind. Now these devices wouldn't work if they weren't constantly around us. That's why we see so many issues in the music industry and in Hollywood. However, there are ways to distract the mind that are much more subtle. This is where the clothing industry comes into play. 
There are a few subtle characteristics you will find in almost every piece of clothing that can expose its true intention. Remember, the devil is in the details. Clothing with the fleshly intent to reveal and entice will have one or more of these characteristics. Through them, you can determine whether or not a garment is intended to reveal a woman's body. Number 1. V-neck There are some dresses that are long and beautiful, no slits, not too tight, but all that can be ruined by a V-neck. Number 2. Tight clothes No matter how long the dress, is it really covering anything up if the shape of the body can clearly be seen through it? Number 3. Short dresses or skirts Dresses and skirts that reveal the legs are not modest at all. Their intentions are quite clear, and anyone who claims to follow scripture should never wear these items. Number 4. Thin fabrics and see-through materials Dressing items made with materials like this are too revealing, and their intent is as clear as day. As said about short dresses and skirts, anyone who claims to follow scripture should never be seen dressed in these kinds of clothes. Number 5. Skirt slits. Long skirts and dresses often have this one tiny detail that can make the difference between modest and immodest. It's these details that expose the intentions of a piece of clothing. The fashion industry is massive and run by people who have no concerns about the truth. We cannot trust the designs of the world when we know that they have no regard for the word of the Most High. When you look past the illusion of modesty and class that a long dress can present and spot the skirt slits, v-necks, thin fabrics, etc., you will begin to see who's behind the details. A good way to explain the requirements when it comes to modesty and fashion would be to say, what you wear shouldn't call or be intended to call any unlawful attention to yourself. We know that a rich woman will dress like a rich woman and vice versa, but the outward appearance says a whole lot about what a person wants from life, whether it be riches, pleasure, or attention. If you dress suggestively, chances are that you are trying to attract a certain kind of attention. And when you cause people to go astray by being a temptation to the flawed mind of sin, you become both a sinner and an insinuator of sin. Surprisingly, you have those who believe that what they wear is not a reflection of what's inside. If your clothes are married to you like skin, then it is very clear what your goal is, and that is to get attention from men. But please understand this, you're not going to get the attention of a man who's looking for a wife, but you will get the attention of men who are looking to ride you off into the sunset. The History of High Heels High heels have a long history, dating as far back as the 10th century. And by the 12th century in India, the image of a statue from the Ramapa temple showing an Indian woman's foot clad in a raised shoe. By the medieval period, both men and women wore platform shoes in order to raise themselves out of the trash and excrement-filled streets. A 17th century law in Massachusetts announced that women would be subjected to the same treatment as witches if they lured men into marriage via the use of high-heeled shoes. In Europe, by the early 17th century, the authorities began to regulate the length of a high heel's point according to social rank. In a book called Shoes, Klaus Karl includes the lengths of shoes by social rank. Quote, half inch for commoners, one inch for the bourgeois, and one and a half inches for knights, two inches for nobles, and two and a half inches for princes. As women took to appropriating this style, the heel's width changed in another fundamental way. Men wore thick heels while women wore thin ones. Then, when Enlightenment ideals such as science, nature, and logic took hold of many European societies, men gradually stopped wearing heels. After the French Revolution in the late 1780s, heels, femininity, and superficiality all became intertwined. 
In this way, heels became much more associated with a woman's supposed sense of impracticality and extravagance. In the 1900s, after World War II, the popularization of pinup girl posters began to appear, which men would often hang in their bunks while at war. Almost all of these girls were pictured wearing high heels, leading to an increase in the relationship between high heels and female sexuality. The tall, skinny stiletto heel was invented in 1950, strengthening the relationship between women, sexuality, and appearance. By the 21st century, magazines like Playboy, as well as other media sources, began to portray women in a sexual way by the use of high heels. Paul Morris, a psychology researcher at the University of Portsmouth, argues that high heels accentuate, quote, sex-specific aspects of female gait, artificially increasing a woman's femininity. Respectfully, the arching of a woman's back facilitated by wearing high heels signals a woman's willingness to be courted by a man. Women wearing high heels was, in all cases, considered to be more sexy. Today, women are now wearing high heels in the business world, as corporate execs, doctors and lawyers, school teachers. They are wearing them to school, work, grocery stores, and even churches. Some female pastors even wear them in the pulpit. In this article, where a gospel singer named Nika the Queen, she quotes saying that Christian girls need to look sexy to attract men to church. Mm, mm, mm. So, do the scriptures say, if your breasts be lifted up, it will draw all men unto God? Or no man can come unto the Father except women's sexy half uncovered body draw them? Is that what it says? Sexy is lustful sensuality. Sexy means sexually attractive or exciting, seductive, alluring, inviting, sensual, lustful. Passionate, horny. This is what sexy means. So when you women go out here and you say you want to look sexy, you are really saying that you want to look lustful. You have the spirit of a whore. And you might not actually be committing the physical action, but you just want to play around with it like a hands-off adultery. But the Messiah said there's no difference. Who do you think designed this attire of a harlot? Satan. Most early designers were men. That's right. Men designed both men and women's clothing. Charles Frederick Worth is believed to be the first fashion designer of the world. From 1826 to 1895, Charles, who was earlier a draper, set up a fashion house in Paris. It was men that designed these lustful outfits because they wanted to fulfill their lust over women. It was a man that designed a tall, skinny, skeletal heel it was a man that designed a bikini and a miniskirt. Modest Apparel 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 9 through 10 In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array, but, which becometh women professing godliness, with good works. 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 3 through 4. Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. How can you demand respect when you walk around acting and dressing like a streetwalker?
don't pretend like you don't know what the heck is going on when men respond to your trampy clothes in disrespect. How you dress says a lot about your heart. It reveals different feelings you may have. And how you carry yourself sends out a certain message to others, those that are around you. The things you do daily are because of the way you feel inside. If you wake up having feelings of loneliness or other desires, you may pick an outfit that would give you the attention you've been seeking. That might help others to notice you more, which would ultimately make you feel better. That may not be the cause for everyone, but it's one of the leading motivations in the women of the world today. Women desire to feel confident, empowered. Women think that dressing a certain way may fix their insecurities, but it will not. Confidence isn't about how you dress. You can be confident regardless to how you dress. It should be more so about your self-worth and who you are as a person. It shouldn't come from dressing inappropriately. Dressing inappropriately will only give you the attention of certain kinds of people. It's not a good attention that they're seeking and it will not fix their problems inside. It will only make them desire to get that attention more and more, which will only lead to sin. But if women dress modestly, they can still build up their confidence in who they are as a person and being humble and carrying themselves in a way that's respectful to themselves and others. Be confident in Yao's word that clearly states that women should dress in modest apparel. The attire of a harlot that phrase comes from Proverbs chapter 7. The woman in Proverbs chapter 7 is a whorish woman. If you read verse 6 through 23. The woman, when Solomon looked through, he describes looking through the window and he saw a young man void of understanding going toward her corner. Okay? She was a strange woman. Okay? She was strange. I'll tell you why she's strange. She's strange because she has the attire of a harlot, but she's not necessarily a harlot. She just looks like one. And she uses the same technique that a harlot look, uses, which is um, seductive dressing to try to lure men. And basically, she's a religious woman, okay? She dresses like a harlot. She looks and acts like a harlot also. She is a religious woman. She wears her attire of a harlot to the churches and assemblies. She wants to seduce young, simple-minded men in their minds and cause them to lust after her, thus committing adultery. The Messiah said what? Whosoever looks at a woman and lusts after her committed adultery. So she says, I'm going to dress a certain way. I'm going to dress sexy. I'm going to dress lustful so that I can cause this man to look at me and lust after me. Wow. This woman is a religious woman. And I got a scripture to prove it. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 13 through 14. So she caught him and kissed him and with an imprudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. What? She's a religious woman, right? That's why she said the good man is on a, is on a fire journey referring to the Messiah and won't, will not return until the appointed day. So she wants to do this while he's not around. Wow. This woman dresses and acts like a church whore. She wants to get men's attention in a lustful way. She wants to do this because she feels that she has control over her body. And that if she dresses a certain way, she will cause men to lust. Why? Because it's of the world. Don't the scripture say that? This is what is of the world, right? This is lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, right? She is full of the world. So now... She is a partaker of his adultery. Now, if you're a woman that's covered up and you're not revealing anything right 
and a man chooses to lust after you, then you're you're not at fault. It's the lust that's in him that's drawing him away, right? You're not luring him into lust with your clothing. But if you're dressing lustful and a man lusts after you, then you will be held accountable for that. Now I know this is a hard truth for some of you women to accept. And I know some of you aren't going to accept it. You know why? Because I know how most of you women think. A lot of women think that they want to wear whatever they want to wear without any responsibility. Don't say anything to me about the way I dress. And the scripture makes it clear and goes against this type of thinking. Now, personally, I think you might as well just join the church of Aleister Crowley or the church of Satan and do as thou wilt. But I'm here to tell you that you will be held accountable for what you wear. That's the word. The History of the Miniskirt A miniskirt is a skirt with its hemline well above the knees, generally at mid-thigh level, and a dress with such a hemline is called a mini-dress or a miniskirt dress. A micro-miniskirt or micro-skirt is a miniskirt with its hemline at the upper thigh, at or just below crotch or underwear level. The iconic miniskirt history is anything but short and sweet, with rebellion, sex, and 60s hedonism at its core. Hitched-up hemlines can date back as far as 4700 BC, but the miniskirt we know and are familiar with today was born out of a youth culture movement that strived to deviate from the repressed post-war 50s fashion. Here we'll explore the origins and cultural representations of this worldwide phenomenon that shook up the fashion world. It was the revolutionary swinging 60s where the miniskirt became the cultural icon we recognize today. It signified a political youth movement where teens no longer wanted to dress like their parents. The miniskirt was a playful, rebellious garment representing the shift in societal dynamics. With the 1960s came big breakthroughs and revolutionary movements that changed the course of history. One of those was the development of the birth control pill. Now, women could explore and indulge in their sexuality without the fear of falling pregnant, and the miniskirt conveyed this newfound freedom. By the 1970s, the miniskirt became associated with sex, drugs, and prostitution. Doesn't the word say, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind? It all started in the assemblies, in the churches, with the gospel singers and the youth groups. This is how the this type of dress code came in the church. These gospel singers want to look and dress just like worldly celebrities. Just look at these gospel singers like Mary Mary and Michelle Williams. The older women are supposed to teach the younger women how to dress. But many do not because either they themselves dress this way or they are afraid to lose the younger generation. I say tell that younger generation to move on. You know, you ain't going to come up in the church and change the way the church dresses. The younger generation isn't supposed to tell the church how to be. The church is supposed to tell them how to live and how to be. They got it twisted. It's backwards. The church assemblies were not supposed to be the place to see a woman dressed with the attire of a harlot. They belong in the streets. So if you come up in the church, you come up in the church because you want to change, not because you want to bring what's in the world into the church. Why are you even up in the church? I get it. 
You come up in the church to get a man. Is that what it is? Mm, mm, mm. These women want to do the same thing that the women in the streets want to do. That's the lure the simple men into lust. You put on what you put on. And I believe that your desired response is for men to drool over you. Okay, they're drooling. Mission accomplished. Now what? Understand this. With that drool comes the pickup call, but yet you are offended. Get real and stop pretending. You can't expect to be treated like a queen when you're acting like a whore, period. The History of the Bikini In early Greece, two-piece garments that resembled bikinis worn by women for athletic purposes are depicted on Greek urns and paintings dating back to 1400 BC. Active women of ancient Greece wore a breastband called a mastodidon or an apodesmos, which continued to be used as an undergarment in the Middle Ages. In early Rome, artwork dating back to the Diocletian period, 286 to 305 AD, in Villa Romana de Casal, Sicily, excavated by Gino Venicio Gentili in 1950 to 1960, depicts women in garments resembling bikinis in mosaics on the floor. The images of 10 women, dubbed the Bikini Girls, exercising in clothes that would pass as bikinis today, are the most replicated mosaic among the 37 million colored tiles at the site. Various false gods of old are depicted as wearing bikinis, the mother goddess of Katalhoyuk, and the Roman marble statue from Pompeii, Venus in a bikini. Louis Rerd, a French automobile engineer and clothing designer, introduced the modern two-piece bikini in July 1946. He opened a bikini shop and ran it for the next 40 years. The bikini was very popular, especially among men, and Bernardini received some 50,000 fan letters. This gave men an opportunity to literally view a woman's body 90% uncovered, which no doubt increased their desire for sex. I remember the first time I saw my wife. And I remember how it made me feel because when I saw her, she was totally covered up. And it wasn't at church. And I tell you what, that's important. When I went to church back in the days of going to the assemblies, and I would notice that people would always put on their best show on Sunday. But then when you saw them during the week, it was like you were looking at a different person. I didn't like that. I wanted someone who this walk is a part of their life, not just on Sunday, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Shabbat, and Sunday, that this is their life. This is how they live. This is how they look. I didn't want somebody that was just Sunday only. And I remember there was a young lady that I probably would have considered years ago, you know, but there was one day where, you know, on Sunday, I would always see them in a long dress, you know, always looking very sanctified and holy, you know, set apart on Sunday. But then when I ran into them on a weekday, this young lady had on shorts so high up on her until it was ridiculous. I mean, I thought I, I, I couldn't believe it was the same person. I was like, man, you wear this kind of stuff? It was that bad. I mean, very bad. And so I, I was kind of bothered, but I said, well, man, here you walk around in the church dressing looking like this and here it is on a weekday you walking around looking like a whore because that's how she looked you look very slutty in the outfit she had on and so i'm not talking about just just regular looking shorts i'm talking about something that was ridiculously crazy and so that bothered me at the time at that time i felt like i didn't know what to, what to think i said man is that how all these women up here are you know at the assemblies because sometimes i would run into plenty of them in jeans blue jeans all tight and stuff like this, I'm like man. So, so you come on Sunday like this, right? Dress different, but on the weekdays you dress totally like a totally different person. 
I didn't want a person like that in my life, you know. I didn't want a young lady that I'm going to have to mold and make her into the way I want her to be. Because if it's of me, it's, it, it ain't going to be strong enough. Eventually, she'll go right back to it. And so I didn't want to have to have to try to teach her how to dress. I wanted somebody who had the Ruach, who was conscious about the way they were dressing, and who, who understood it, and I didn't have to explain anything. And so... The first day I saw my wife, she was at work. She was sitting at the front of this furniture store. She was a buyer for a furniture store. And she was just sitting at the front and just greeting people as they came in the door. So I saw her, I said hi, she said hello. And I, as I walked by her, I went over there. I had a friend of mine with me and I kept looking over there. I said, wow, I said, now nah, that's what I'm talking about. And I said, here this young lady is at work and she's totally covered up, she's totally dressed. I mean, looking sanctified and holy. I said, I don't even know if she if she is even a churchgoer, you know? But just looking at what I was seeing, the outward appearance was it on, I mean, just, it was it on the money. And so, I didn't give, a, I didn't have enough courage to try to talk to her that first day. And I was, I was putting some furniture in the layaway for my mother. And after I, I put the, the, the deposit down on the furniture for, for the layaway for my mother, I left her out of there. And I didn't see her no more. You know, she had left from the area there, so we had left out. And so I'll never forget, I was like, man, that young lady there, man, she was incredible. I was actually trying to get my friend to talk to her, and he was like, no, he was scared to talk to her too. And so, to make a long story short, after I went back and I made several payments on the furniture, I didn't see her none of those times. The day I went back on the last day to pay off the furniture was when I saw her walking down the aisle toward me. And as she passed by me, I spoke to her, and she said hello and kept on going. And I turned, and I looked at her, and she was totally covered all the way down from head to toe. I mean, all the way up here, you know, nothing revealing. And so I was intrigued by this young lady who looked like she was only about 18, 19 years old, maybe 20. And I'm looking like, I'm like, I'm like man, I'm not seeing this in young, young ladies. You know, to be outside of church dressed like this. So I was really shocked. And so when I finally got a chance to meet her and introduce myself to her, we became friends at the time. I was really shocked that this is how she dressed. Whenever we went places, she was always dressed in long dresses and, and long skirts and outfits that totally covered herself up. Now, I said this story for a reason. Some of you women out there, you think you have to come out of your clothes show a little leg, show a little thigh, you know, show a little uh, a little breast, you know, to get a man's attention. You don't have to do that. You really don't have to do that because a spiritual man wants his woman to cover it up. I'm going to tell you that now. The spiritual man wants his woman to cover it up. And even some men that ain't spiritual, look, look how they respond, right? When they see a woman that's not covered up right, they respond a certain way to her, right? But when they see a woman that's covered up and she totally covered up and got herself together, they, most men out that, that are out there that's just being like um, uh, players, they scared to approach a woman like that. They're absolutely afraid to. And so all I'm saying is that's, you don't uncover yourself if you want a man. What you do is you cover yourself up and you seek Yah and you let Yah lead that man to you. You know, you don't uncover yourself because when you uncover yourself, you're going to get the wrong type of man. Trust me, you're going to get the wrong. I've seen it too many times, you know, and it's a hard lesson. It's a hard lesson to teach women. You know, they just feel like, hey, what's wrong with me showing it? I want people to see how beautiful I look. You should wait till you marry. Let your husband see how beautiful you are. Believe me, because uncovering don't make you look more beautiful. You understand me? If you're beautiful, you're beautiful inside and out. And, it don't, and, and you can be covered up completely and still be beautiful. That's what you got to understand. It doesn't take all of that. And my suggestion is that you women need to cover up. You seeking y'all for a man, cover up. You know, and even a good man ain't going to like you going out there uncovering yourself for other men to look at, other men to lust over, because that's what it's all about. You understand? So, I hope this made some sense to some of you out there and that you will cover up because that attire of a harlot ain't gonna get it.
To believe that fashion is not influenced by popular culture is just like ignoring the algorithms of life and death. You can't. What was once perceived as non-acceptable dress for modest apparel is now accepted as the norm, which totally goes against every spiritual algorithm set forth by our ancestors. Women now believe that less is best when it comes to fashion and that the oxymoron are those who believe that you get a man by covering up rather than peeling off. Sure, you can get a man by peeling off your clothes or revealing what should be covered up, but don't be surprised at the type of man you might attract. Don't kid yourself into thinking that you will attract a quality man with less than virtuous actions and apparel. Many women instinctively knows what outfits will attract those of the opposite sex, which is why certain fashion trends were birthed to begin with. Because we're allowing loose, celebrity, or trampy women to dictate the fashion trends, it is now touted as normal behavior to see a woman dressing provocatively, even when doing normal, everyday activities. This mindset has been planted established and accepted by the masses because of the spirit of deception floated out by the devil's fashion industry. Have you been infected? <laughs>